Hi, it's Jesse Walter with Model Technology Solutions. And for this year's Automation Management Summit, I wanted to show that you can really get creative when building tools using PowerShell and either Windows Forms or WPF. So I decided to build something that is completely impractical, really, and a total misuse of PowerShell. Uh, but it drives home the point and my mantra with PowerShell that if you can dream it, you can do it. So I created PowerShell Invaders. And it looks a little something like this. See what I mean about uh, completely impractical and a waste of time. But again, it does show that this is all PowerShell and this is all XAML that was created using Visual Studio. So I figured I'd create a couple part series in a video blog format. And this is part one. So as I stated, I used Visual Studio and here is the solution file that I created. Um, it started with a backdrop and for every image I created, I created the background, um, I added sprites for the space invaders, explosion, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And what I did here, I just right clicked and I add existing item and path to my source directory for all these images. Here's a backup folder because um, I was manipulating a lot of them as I went on and imported them one at a time. Once they were here, what I did was I dragged and dropped into my grid and what that did was create these new objects for me. Now you can't see them because I have the visibility hidden, but if I change it visible, you'll see I have my invader one here. Now with PowerShell, I could have just perhaps created an array and duplicated this object but I wanted to verify or ensure that all my settings were exactly how I wanted them all the properties were the same uh, as the next and then I could manipulate those properties as I go and I'll show that in a future video so I found it easier to actually copy this line and create each invader that I needed and each of these objects in Visual Studio I could go over and uh, manipulate as I desire. The first point is I needed to ensure each name was unique uh, otherwise there would be errors out the wazoo. And I created the visibility as hidden for everything just to ensure that uh, as you saw when I ran the initial script it popped up and only gave me the title screen so when I hit enter everything appears. I'll show you how I do that actually in the uh, future video as well. Blow up buddy. Oh come on, hit me, hit me. So going back here, all of this is the XAML I use and I left the name main window and that's important moving on. All of my WPF that I create and all the XAML I create I leave titled main window as long as it's going to be a single window uh, application and this is so I can reuse the function or call the function in the same way every single time so moving on I want to show the function that I have for loading XAML now this is a product of researching other ways to do this some people call it directly in the script. Um, other people have created functions, but they operate a little differently. I've trimmed it up and I've added other lines that uh, help me get to the end result in a little more efficiently, in my opinion. So what we do here is we have a parameter that uh, points to the XAML path that we define. And I create a variable for uh, image source. And what this is is just a string that I use 
uh, to replace what we have in the XAML. So for example, the background.jpg. Uh, PowerShell won't know what background.jpg is if I don't point it to where that source directory is. So I need to replace that. So this line searches the uh, root of where the load XAML PS1 exists and goes through and finds a directory named images. So it's very important that we have a directory here called images and that contains all of my source files. And from there we replace, uh, well we import the XAML and we replace things like the uh, MC colon ignorable and the X class, uh, things that PowerShell does not import correctly. And we also replace our source equals with our new image source string. What this does is then rewrites that XAML. I can move down the line after I add the assembly. Uh, and then I take in all my XAML um, that is in this WPF here. I don't necessarily need it to be global since we're running it in the same function, but it is what it is. Uh, feel free to remove that. And loads that up. And then within there, we select everything that is um, precursed by name. And it was x colon name, as we can see here, x colon name. But remember, up above, we replace that x colon n. So now the XAML reads with name. So everything that's name is going to now be a new variable within PowerShell. So again I wanted to make this a couple part series because next we're gonna really get into the whole engine of Play PS Invaders and um, I didn't want to overload or go over time on the first video. That's gonna come up soon but all of the source content is in a link down below. Uh, but I do recommend coming back and moving through this with me. And uh, I'm sure off, you guys can offer su suggestions on how we can do this better. This was created quickly and really just because I wanted to uh, prove a point. But I'm sure there's much uh, more that can be done with this script. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.